Greetings, Flesh Wound Horror Freaks, and welcome to a brand new episode of Flesh Wound Horror. And we have another Masters of Horror Season 2 episode for you today, and we're really excited to get into these. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get right into it. Uh, our first uh, episode of the night is Pro-Life from director John Carpenter. And this one, for the staff of a women's clinic, the ultimate nightmare is waiting to explode. Trapped inside is a terrified pregnant 15-year-old, and outside is her crazed anti-abortion activist dad. Ron All right. Perlman. Ron Perlman. Na national treasure. Uh, so, Just uh, in case, my, I, I'm Todd, that's Pugs, and that's Mike over there. Oh, yes. I'm getting... I don't know What's if I need to this? introduce you anymore, but I guess we could have new listeners. All right. Nothing. What's up? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I, I, we can have new listeners, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We might strike one. Keep going. <laughs> uh, all right. So, pro life. Uh, Kruger, I know this is a first time watch, so I got to get you in on this one uh, first. What did you think of pro life? Well, first off, I got to say, I had a fantastic soundtrack, per usual, anything John Carpenter does. Um, yeah. Awesome performance, like you guys said, from Ron per Perlman. Um, I like how the story kept you guessing at first, and it just gets batshit insane. Uh, this is my favorite episode as of right now, and everything about it is perfect. Like, the gore and effects hmm. look great. Uh, it gets really nasty and fucked up. There's so much great uh gunshot gore in this episode and then uh like creature effects all types of stuff this is definitely my favorite episode like i said before and i really enjoyed the hell out of this i'm gonna revisit this over and over and over again and i saw some comparisons with uh the void actually a little bit uh i kind of mm -hmm. think that void may have uh got a little bit of uh inspiration from this but uh yeah, like I said, loved it. Did you like the cool ass demon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, he was so sick. It reminded me of like something out of Doom, like a like a broth mm. from Doom. I thought it was funny that like Hellboy's here and like, oh, you guys should be friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with Kruger one hundred percent. The story alone is fucking fantastic. So then you get John Carpenter telling it, and then you know he knows how to work monsters and with suspense. I remember not expecting that to come out, and once it did, I was like, "This is fucking nuts! Hell yes!" So more like this would be amazing. Um, but we'll see where we go. I loved it. It wasn't a first time watch for you, was it, Pugs? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I didn't know if, like, for some reason, it's weird with Masters of Horror. There were some people that stopped after season one. And um... and Pugs seems like the type of person to do that. Good one, Dan. Todd's <laughs> <laughs> a little John, sour. To... John Carpenter is one of my favorites of all time, dude. So I was looking forward uh, yeah. to this when it was announced. That and then abortion clinics and stuff, like, that, that has me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. The, I I love this episode, but I'm gonna say right off the bat, this is from Carpenter's period where he's mining his earlier material because this is 100% assault on yeah. the abortion clinic, <laughs> and then yeah. he's got the, the cool monsters. I don't mind like he started that with Ghost of Mars and kind of remixing his stuff. Doesn't bother me because I really love this one, but I can't not mention that. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's I, actually I, I was definitely in that watching this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Actually, I didn't notice the void vibe act until you mentioned that earlier, Kruger. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it also kind yeah. of made me think of Legend, just the with the uh -huh. demonic uh, creature kind of, uh, not the same design exactly. Uh, there was. It's weird. This one had some con. Well, not weird. It's it centers around an abortion <laughs> clinic, so naturally. <laughs> people were going to lose their shit. Uh, but even John Carpenter said, this is just a monster movie. <laughs> you know, there's no like serious yeah. commentary on abortion. It's just a fun setting for a monster movie. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, it, it gets pretty ugly, especially some of the surgical vengeance that's performed. And um, yeah, we definitely need to talk about more of that in the spoilers. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we might have some light spoilers again because these are a little older. But uh, uh, anything with Ron Perlman, man, I, he is awesome. He was Hellboy for, yeah, I think a couple years at this point. So uh, I'm sure the irony wasn't lost on him. But, oh, man, we get the giant-ass creature that, oh, that fucked up whatever you want to call it, spider-like creature. Uh, and it's just it's just a good time. There's nothing deep about it. I remember hearing that they were going to do an abortion episode, and I thought, wow, this is going to be this year's like imprint. And it's really not. It's just a good time. Um, it's nothing per- particularly controversial, but the gunshots... Particularly controversial. Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not particularly controversial. The subject matter alone is controversial. Not really. You're telling me that these pro-lifers aren't fucking out of their goddamn mind. I'm pro-death, by the way. (laughs) I don't think this one, though, was like trying to make a a grand statement about it. I don't know. I mean, it's not... um, If they're looking for it, though, they'll find it. Yeah. I didn't say anything bad, Todd. God damn it. Um... (sighs) Anyways, what did I say before? Her body, my right. choice. So let's write this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, what do you give it? Uh, I give this one a four. It's a lot of fun. Not my favorite episode, but damn, man, it brings the effects for sure. I am a four and a half. I really like this one. Cinco. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> And another yeah, one. I'm a, I'm a five. <laughs> this hit all the, yeah, this hit all the right, the right shit for me. And uh, it's my favorite episode so far, even though it's changed like every episode of Masters <laughs> of <Ability did>. But <laughs> what did what knocked? Uh, I'm trying to remember what knocked. Uh, what what did this knock out of the number one spot for you? Uh, imprint. Oh, it wasn't okay. Just. Yeah, and just because it hit like more of the you know the creature effects, like you said, we'll talk more about it in spoilers. But let's get on to the next episode. So, from Kruger's lips, American <laughs> fetuses are better than Asian fetuses. America, yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, what the fuck <laughs> is that one for you, Kruger? <laughs> I think I got a little bit afraid like halfway through that joke and like abandoned. We'll see that. It. Okay. No. I'm more confident yeah. that I could take Todd. I'm not confident that I can take Kruger's. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so you get more money for American babies, right, Dan? <laughs> oh, oh, I shouldn't have said it. All right, <laughs> moving on. Uh, our next episode is from director Dario Argento, and it is Pelts. Meatloaf stars as a furrier struggling to build a business. A strange group of raccoon hides could make a coat that will change his fortunes forever. All right, so uh, I've this one I was really excited about going in because. I really like Jennifer, so I was like really okay. Curious if- st- I got to stop you right there. You've gone this far in the episode and have not brought up. This is the reuniting of the legendary John Saxon and Dario Argento from oh, Jesus. I was from Tenebrae. Shut up, Dan. From the greatest Argento film, Tenebrae, or one of the greatest. I'll give it that. Yeah, that's definitely in the top three, if not the greatest. Um, so, anyways. I was also going to say, based on the F. Paul Wilson short story, so there's reading material if you enjoy this one. Uh, All right, so I I was really curious to check this out after Jennifer. Uh, You know, Dario's, this is kind of that period where, you know, not as good on the film front, but he was slaying it on Masters of Horror, and this is no different. Uh, for me, this is a very unusual story. Uh, you've got the Three Mothers trilogy homage with uh, Mother Mather, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. As Todd said, John Saxon popping up. And I, I do want to throw something out there, Dan. I know you're trying to like give Dracula 3D some shit, but this was 2007. Turd. This is 2007. Yeah, I know. I didn't say that. I know. I'm it's a whole five years before, and there was still good stuff. Card player, and, you know. See, I, I like card I don't player. Hate any, I don't hate any of them, but they're not his earlier work. That's well, all I'm 
Yeah. Do you like Hitch- a lot of- Do you like Hitchcock is on par with his earlier work? Mm. Uh, I would disagree. I think it depends which earlier. So. All right. Well, fair enough. It's hard to touch his early stuff through the eighties, certainly. But this one. Holy shit. This had probably some of my favorite gore. Um, I'm a big fan of Meatloaf for some of his acting, uh, especially in this. I love the scene when he's chewing out his employees. It reminded me of when he was screaming at Gary Busey. I think if Gary Busey (laughs) were in this, if he were in this episode... I, you know, I might get my first six. Since Dan doesn't understand what context is in any setting, I will explain that comment. Gary Busey and Meatloaf were both on Dan's favorite show, President Trump's The, the Celebrity Apprentice, and they got in a screaming match. So there's the context you did not. 2016, and, and you God, don't want to what? Yeah, you don't want to. Don't want to fuck with Meatloaf. That's what. The funniest <laughs> thing when he yelled at him, he found the thing that he thought Gary Busey stole. That was the funniest thing. And then as far as I told you, and he's like, "Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> <laughs> like fucking Busey, I just warned you, don't fuck with me. <laughs> well, All right, I'm gonna fanboy out on this one some more, but uh, Kruger, what did you think of Pelts? It's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, so this is great. Uh, honestly, like you said, probably some of the best kills the whole out of like the whole Masters of Horror uh, series. Uh, I love the opening scene with the bodies covered in blood. It catches your attention like super fast, and how you know eventually we come back to that. Uh, great soundtrack, per usual Argento. Uh, like you said, I love Meatloaf. Anytime you have him in a role where. You- He's yelling at people and just you have a happy Kruger. Uh, I'm a big fan of him, his music, his acting, everything about Meatloaf. And uh, the dialogue in this is hilariously written uh, with some of the shit he says. Um, I What's like the appearance by John Hello? Saxton. Bad <laughs> I like the appearance by John, John Saxton. It felt more uh, like out of stuff i've seen him do and then he was a little bit more like over the top so i really like that um mm-hmm. the practical effect and the gore like i said is fantastic and it, this is my favorite uh argento episode out of the two this is one of the best episodes of masters of horror in my opinion too absolutely and i would go through it all for that girl too so love you meatloaf pugs what say you i know you wouldn't no no i'm i don't wear coonskin that's not for me well, actually, maybe. Anyway, so this episode is fucking gnarly as shit. It is graphic as fuck and gross as fuck. And Meatloaf's one-liners, his deliveries are fucking incredible. The egg roll line, the um, <laughs> shit, I, was, I, I just lost it. Motherfucker. Anyway, Meatloaf is the man. Love him. That bear trap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just fucking masterful. Yeah, the story rules. And even though it has a black girl in it, whatever. <laughs> I know you I like wear the when... coon skin, right, Dan? You like those coats? God damn. I liked when the uh the the raccoons were like peering into the window. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um I, I mean it's almost a fairy tale at the same time as being really fucked up. Did you like and... the totting scene? <laughs> yeah. He it's, just she came around. <laughs> he went right out and said it, and of course they don't have this in the synopsis, but he just wanted some backdoor action. I mean, that's kind of the story. To this. Dude, isn't that hilarious when he has the song? You know, I do anything for love, but I won't do that. That's about <laughs> anal sex. I'm like, I'm to ask right for it. Like, <laughs> didn't last very long. Uh, speaking of that, Todd, what did you think of uh, Pelts? Yeah, I'm with you guys. I fucking <laughs> love this episode. Um, the only thing is, like, I still think Jennifer's better, but yes. th- this episode is is awesome. I don't know. It's a tough one for me to pick between the two, but I, this has probably okay. got the best score. No, definitely. 
Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, let's rate this one. Highly recommended for me. This is unique, freaky. It's got everything going for it. Uh, great skin. And yeah, it can mean uh, different things in this episode. I give it a five. I'm a four and a half again on this one. Really like this one. I'm going to give it a five. It is just way too fun and brutal not to. So. All right. Yeah, and I'm a five as well. Uh, I think it's just as good as Jennifer, uh, but it is my preferred out of the two, but both of them are five out of five. And this is definitely some of my favorite stuff that uh, Dario Argento has done, you know, being completely new to his stuff. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, you're new to the movies too, right? Yeah. A lot. Oh, that's, Damn, I'm jealous that you off. get to relive it. <laughs> I'm jealous that you get to relive it for the first time. That's cool. Uh, I want to see a Pelt Jennifer crossover. I actually feel that that could exist in the same. That'd be pretty universe. dope. I'm into Boy. it. <laughs> uh, all right. So moving on to our last one for the evening, which is from director Joe Dante, The Screwfly Solution. Uh, a terrifying rash of homicides involving normal male sexual urges transforming into violent rage, into a violent rage force. A pair of scientists race against time to figure out how and why. Uh, all right. So this one. Uh, well, uh, Kruger, what did you think? I'm curious. This one doesn't get talked about a lot. So some of the acting in this one I felt was kind of off. Uh, especially, you know, just watching two of my favorite episodes right before it, uh, the acting definitely was, you know, a drop in quality. Uh, this kind of has a political tone a little bit too. And I was kind of hoping for something different from Joe Dante, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Wasn't huge on the whole, you know, God told me to kill women storyline. I don't know. It just really didn't do it for me. There's a couple of bright spots though. Uh, there's one particularly creepy ass moment I'll get into with in the spoilers, but overall it just wasn't for me. And I think okay. the ending is super out of left field, and like it, I thought it had a crappy ass twist. Uh, what did you think, Pugs? I actually really liked this episode too. Uh, I think Jason Priestley did a fantastic job. I always expect you know shit from him, but he's a better director than he is an actor. But uh, yeah, so he was cool. Everyone else. It was fine. Uh, the story was interesting enough to keep me along the Dan plague, which is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I, I actually really liked it. I liked all all the the threat, th how they felt threreatened every time you know a dude walks by, or, you know they give them the look. Fuck those construction workers though. You know, you know act right, even even with the plague. I just have to say real quick, I have down Dan's final solution is the name. So ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Todd. But I, I really did like to... Jason Priestley, and uh, I'm sure Dan's going to prove out on the wife, but good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm, kind uh, of in, I'm kind of in between. I, I, I like this episode, and I, I never think it's boring, but I also think it loses me in its last act. Um, so I, I didn't I, – I, I went along for the ride, but I didn't like where we ended up. I think that's my biggest problem with this one. I'm going to call bullshit that you I didn't like, like it. No, no, no. I'm going to call bullshit because the reason you didn't like this was you were jealous of the gas station attendant's titty purse. He carved <laughs> it out better than you do, and you were just jealous of it. Craftsmanship. He must have watched Pelts. Yeah, yeah exactly. If, if exactly. only. <laughs> Maybe that's where this all started from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what's funny? I thought I had a thought while watching this. This would probably piss me off if it were new and coming out now, uh, <laughs> for some reason. But uh, I dug, I I dug it. Uh, it's it doesn't go as hard as it could, as for, hard as Dan wanted it to go. <laughs> uh, He's like, well, these guys are too nice to these women. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted the girl at the end to go through like a time machine, just have like statues of Todd on the beach. It's like, damn you, uh, damn dirty rapes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, it, it's a pretty good story. I don't think it realizes its full potential of what it could be. Uh, Elliot Gould felt a little bit off as the 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 shocker dude didn't guy. like him. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, he just felt off. I don't know. It's like there were certain points where he was like joking, and it's like everybody's got to cut their dingus off. It's like okay, uh, well, the foreskin. I wouldn't do that either. Well, not cut it off, ke- chemical. But how many people do you think would actually do it? I just be like, sorry, family, I'm going to go be a murderer in some remote location. So nothing changes for you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I think I win the battle on this one. This is Planet of the Todds, but uh, anyways. Then how would you win the uh, battle? <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> like you're speaking I, to their leader. <laughs> I don't have any issues with Jason Priestley. I, I've never, I've not really watched like a ton of Jason Priestley stuff, so I thought he was perfectly fine. Um, he had that creepy moment with the daughter, and then, like you said, the ending's kind of like what the fuck. I, it didn't do a lot I for me either. He hinted at it. A little bit in the very beginning, but it's, I I agree with you guys. I think it's fucking stupid. You know, whatever. Well, we can yeah, we can talk about it a little more. But uh, all right, let's rate this one. Uh, for me, the concept is definitely original, uh, but I'm a I'm a two and a half. Mm-hmm. And yes, I was maybe a five for uh, priest. And now I'm going to call bullshit on Dan. It's because again, they didn't go hard enough on the women. So I. I I did, on the other hand, enjoy uh, a lot of it. I am a three and a half. I was borderline four in this one, but dude, you were same. Up the well, same. I was going back and forth between three and a half and four. But I, I had too much fun with it not to give it a four, so I'm gonna be nice. Four. Okay. Yeah, and I'm with Dan. I'm a two and a half as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, it really didn't do it for me, but like I said, it does have you know a couple of bright moments. And another criticism I forgot, as a character, not the actress, but the daughter, what a dumbass character. <laughs> Holy well, shit. Yeah, Dan, we know. you All women. We get it. Shut Don't have to oversell that. it. Um, I up. will say, though, this. It seems like when, <sighs> when Joe Dante gets the chance, both of his episodes have been political. Homecoming and this one. Mm-hmm. So, which we don't really... I just watched... The whole 3D the other or last night, and none of that. I don't know. So if it's just when he gets the chance to do whatever he wants, that's what he wants. Because I love Joe Dante stuff. Yeah. But these do fill out of place with the rest. Yeah, I, yeah, and I think being Joe Dante, that's why there were a few elements that they didn't go harder on. I think if it was like Argento directing this, they might have gone there. But I know, you guys want to get into the spoilers? Yes, I, yeah. I, there's something. On this episode I really want to talk about though. All right, Dan. Spoiler warning, guys. Uh, if you if, uh, don't want it spoiled. These have been around a while, so if we had tiny spoilers during the reviews, so well, that's just because they've been around a while. But we're getting into open spoiler time. <laughs> so <Thank you>. so, <laughs> so if you, come back next week if you or next episode if you don't want to hear spoilers. All right, thank you. Yeah, so like the alien thing with the Joe Dante episode. So, you know, the screw five solution, I just, I, I didn't like how out of left field it was. And right before I was starting to really like it again, like you said, with the like titty purse, that was cool. And like, really like, you know, kind of absurd and out of left field too. But just the aliens thing, I, I mean, it, I, it wasn't even that they were CGI. I mean, I was fun with the way that the aliens looked, but it just seemed weird considering everything else but you know i kind of got it that that stripper stabbing scene was really cool though like i said that uh, the, out of everything in this episode that was that. probably like my favorite scene <laughs> i'd paid extra for that yeah. um, if that's allowed fuck yeah take my money <laughs> um, I, I the alien bullshit with that um uh garden of eden bullshit uh when they were telling that story so i can like with Noah being the the Ark being a fucking spaceship and everything, but yeah, I didn't I didn't care for that. I kind of wish it would just ended ambiguously and not ha- cut that shit out. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. I I thought I think it could have just ended on the the planets fighting back kind of deal. I don't think they necessarily had to have the aliens either, but uh, 
yeah, that's all I got on this one. No, I'm good. You guys go. Uh, no, all other right. than that, I just wanted uh, to say on the the scene on the plane where the flight attendant snaps that. Mm-hmm. All right. I just wanted to say the scene on the uh, plane where the flight attendant snaps that bitch's neck was funny as fuck. Like, <laughs> I laughed goes, my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's just, like, kind of sitting quiet in their chairs. Thank where you were you at 9 man? Down. We could have used you. Yeah. It looked like a normal Southwest flight to me, so. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have any major spoilers, but I, I do want to say on Pelts, when he comes out with the skin off, oh my god, that's like horror nirvana <laughs> at that point. Dude, when he's screaming in the bathroom while yeah. cutting it, holy shit. <laughs> you know what would have been a well, and every time he like, fell? Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, the skin, you know, because he's falling on this, you know, already skin flesh. Uh, yeah. That was awesome. I thought it would have been funny to end it when he jumps down if he just, like, landed on top of her and just crushes <laughs> her. <laughs> just... for my buddy, Snooker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming, Nancy. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't really have spoilers beyond that. I just thought, man, that is so good. I didn't uh, realize like coonskin was a big uh, like fur coat thing. I'm like, mm-hmm. they're just raccoons. What, what? What's the big deal? <laughs> Dan loves his coon coat, dude. How I sick was that baseball? How sick was that baseball bat killed to the face? Oh yeah, that was badass. <laughs> that was cool, um, and it it is always great to see. Uh, Ron Perlman, or not Ron Perlman, John Saxon. Sorry, I'm on pro life. Um, Both of them are cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so pro life, uh, yeah, the, the, <laughs> that surgery. It's like, except we gotta make a hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that was Dude, good. That was I was not expecting it to be that brutal. Dude, when the ground cracks open and shit starts going off, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. John Carpenter just took his dick out and said, everyone suck this shit. Okay, John, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, that's just really cool. I want I want more of that monster. Dude, that baby. Yeah. Oh, the fucking monstrous stillborn thing. <laughs> I thought it was messed up that uh, the, the demon didn't just kill her then because ob- he obviously knew she killed the baby, so... I was a little surprised. Like, really? You're just leaving? Aren't you going to do uh, something? Well, he was probably the key. All I'm saying out, is that, so... that. What's that? Yeah, that, and that's just that visual mm-hmm. of the demon father picking up the baby that's, you know, all fucked up and, you know, with the crab arm and shit. And just that visual of him holding it is like one of my favorite scenes out of anything I've seen in Masters of Horror so far. Fuck yeah. Yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I season two is really good. I know a lot of people criticize it for getting uh, uh, going a little over the top with some of the stories, but I fucking love it. Uh, so that's that's all I've got. Does anybody else have anything else spoiler wise? No. All right. Well, I am gonna say goodbye and uh, pugs. Take Todd. Good night. Kruger. Stay sick. Namaste, everybody. Happy Halloween and enjoy uh, following us on all the bullshits. Social media bullshits. <laughs> <laughs>